Hi and welcome back to my playthrough of A Touch of Evil. Overall last turn wasn't bad, unfortunately Brother Marcus has been KO'd and unfortunately has been KO'd during the mystery phase so he will not take place in this game round at this point in time at least. And on top of this I also misinterpreted his strength of spirit. I played this ability like once per round which to be honest, really makes sense because he's really a powerful character. But here it says one limit once per turn. And that really means once per each hero's turn. So in a three player game, he can do that three times plus during the mystery phase as well. Of course, if he has done enough um, investigation, he can really do this ability quite often. And yeah, on a basically 50% chance, he would be able to cancel any mystery card out there in the game and to be honest i find that pretty overpowered to be honest because he is able to take out a lot of enemies with his um faithful ability here he starts the game with four spirit already so overall i'm not really sure that this is the way how he should play it but yeah this answer interpretation came from jason the designer himself not really sure if he <laughs> saw this through but yeah I think I will play this way now in order to so there would be a chance that he may not be KO during the last round but I think this is really something I will not take back. But without further ado let's get back to the game. Katarina is the first player this round so let's roll for her movement. That's only a two and this sucks because this doesn't bring her anywhere anywhere to be honest and I'm not sure I think yeah we have to start taking out those ghost soldiers so maybe I will move her closer to the mana. Yeah why not so one two that was a quick turn there's nothing to encounter on this space so let's move over to frederick leon let's see he rolls a four that's more like it but also not really great so i think i will move him close to the windmill or so maybe then send him to the blacksmith in order to at least gain an event card or so let's see one two three he doesn't have any investigation at this point in time i think think can he get investigation no he can't so yeah let's simply draw an event card here the blacksmith and escape is another pretty lame card only this um, portion on the bottom of this card is true for the co cooperative game play to prevent all wounds that would be done to a town elder and if during a showdown return them to town okay this can help if you're really losing a good um, guy out there but yeah overall there are definitely greater cards in the deck and yeah, as Brother Marcus is still KO'd, we can jump directly into the mystery phase. At the start of the mystery phase, I think there is nothing to do if I'm not mistaken. So the second step would be to stand up Brother Marcus. And now it's time to roll on the mystery phase chart here. That's a six. And we know that one March of Darkness, every minion on the board immediately moves two spaces along the shortest path to the town hall if there are no blah blah blah. Okay, we do have two minions on the board. This ghost soldier moves one, two spaces here, and this ghost soldier moves one, two spaces right onto the space of Katarina the Outlaw, who has to engage those guys right away. Against the ghost soldiers, you have to use your spirit. So those are the two fight dice for Katarina, those are the three fight dice for for the ghost soldiers so let's see i think this deadly still counts because it says during during fight dice and these are her fight dice i think that's pretty clear okay that's good that's not too bad so that's one wound each i think we can definitely live with that one for her and one for those well, let's put them here one for those gold soldiers I can still take two more so let's move on to the next fight round. I think we are not escaping. But no, she can definitely take it. That's for sure. Okay, that's not great. That's not great. That's another wound for Katarina the Outlaw. And as we've done no hits this round, we now have to roll another die. And I think on a roll of one or two, we would have to escape. And yeah, I think this would really suck, to be honest. So let's see. No, we can continue to fight. That was a five. So let's move into the third fight round. Yep, that's a hit for her, which is great. So keep in mind, she is deadly. 
uh, they do don't do a hit that's great so let's move into the next fight round so that is a good chance perfect and wow that was close she also takes two wounds but luckily she has her endurance card with her so she can take an additional wound but what's really more important this is enough to take out those ghost soldiers and this gives her five investigation which isn't bad and then we have to draw our mystery card in here <laughs> Are you kidding me? The March of Darkness again. It's just the result we've wrote. Every minion on the board immediately moves two spaces along the shortest path towards the town hall. In theory, Marcus could um, try to get rid of it, but I think he wants to stand and fight so one and two, so he will now also engage in a fight with those ghost soldiers. Because his spirit is pretty high, he rolls four dice. They still roll their three dice. So let's move into the first round of combat. Okay, I take it. That's not too bad. That's one wound for the ghost soldier. So let's move on. Okay, that's another wound for them and one wound for brother Marcus. So I think overall that's okay. Yeah, why not? Let's move on. Third round of combat. Okay, that's not a hit. Okay, we have to roll again. And on a roll of one or two, he has to escape. Oh no! Ah, oh, that's a pity. Do I have any re-roll? Uh, and unfortunately, I don't. Oh, this sucks. This really sucks. So yeah, I think I will, huh, it's interesting now. I think I will move or escape to the blacksmith. And of course I have to bring back those ghost soldiers here. And yeah, this ends the combat. Okay, let's pass the first player token to Frederick Leon. Let's roll for his movements. Let's see what we get. That's another one. Wow, we get another event. Unbelievable. Oh, and here we have just drawn the entrance. Play immediately. Play this card on any hero. And I think I will play this on Brother Marcus because he's basically our second tank with his high spirit. He's really great against those ghost soldiers. I think that's really something we should do. Awesome. But actually, I was really hoping to get into the windmill or so. So should I go somewhere else and draw an event card instead? Yeah, I think let's do that. So let's move into the magistrate's office here. Let's draw another event. And yeah, we already know this card. If I could just reach play to immediately take any item out of any discard pile. That's in theory a great card, but right now there isn't a discard pile and especially no discard pile with an item in it. Then it's brother Marcus. Let's roll for his movement. That's a six and oh, are you kidding me? He now rolls a six and I think my idea was to really move him into the town hall here in order to yeah take out or try to take out those ghost soldiers again. I think this is what he will do because that's a really great way to give him some investigation. So yeah. Let's move him here. Let's fight those ghost soldiers again. So again, it's four versus three. Let's hope for the best. Okay, that's one wound each. He still can take three more wounds, but I think before I want to play this recovery card here, I he can still take two more wounds before he is KO'd. So I think, yeah, let's better wait for another round of combat. The card says except during a fight, but the rules are pretty clear that between fight rounds um, this is not supposed to be during a fight. So I can still do that in between fight rounds, but not yet. So let's see. Okay, that's also not bad. And I think now he has taken three wounds and now I will play the recovery. So I will roll another die and yeah that many wounds I can remove. That's two, but of course I take it. That's not too bad. Could have been definitely much worse. And then we can move directly into the next round of combat. So yeah, let's bring the dice tower back. Those are still, oh, that's five dice now. Okay, of course this should have been four dice. And ooh, yeah, that's good enough to take out those ghost soldiers, but he takes an additional two wounds. Are you kidding me? But what's really more important are those five additional investigation. Awesome. 
But of course, we are still not done yet. We still have to draw two cards. He can choose to keep one and then we would roll a d6. And yeah, on the roll of one or two, we have to draw a mystery card. And those are two great cards. Near miss, play to cancel any mystery card that is keyword dash or play to force a hero, minion or villain to reroll all of their successful to hit rolls for one fight round. Wow. And this is also great to allow them to add their cunning to their combat for one fight round. This would be great for Frederick Leo in the showdown or so. Oh man, both are tempting, but I think I would rather go for the tactical strike here. Yeah, let's keep this one. Then let's roll for the mystery card here. That's a three, so that's good. We, are we don't have to draw one. It's perfect. And last but not least, it's Katarina, who is really severely injured. But uh, let's roll for her movement. Ah, that's another one. Oof, interesting. So yeah, what did we get? Party invitation. Play immediately. Play this card on any hero that hero may... Ah, oh, come on. We know this one. Uh, Frederick Leon. I think she's right now on the way to the mana. So yeah, let's keep it with her but with a run she's not getting anyway so I, anywhere so i think let's move her back to the church this would allow her to draw an additional event card that's another gossip and rumors we can peek at the secrets of one town elder without revealing them so i think i will wait again for frederick leon's turn because he can decide never to reveal a town elder seek which would, could really help to be honest and this also allows him to i think discard a secret and draw a new one awesome but i think she wants to train her spirit in the church so she will pay two investigation she has an honor of five so she rolls five dice and one five or more is enough perfect so she was able to train her spirit too Nice. Then we are already back in the mystery phase. So let's roll on the charge. That's an 11. That's a bad one. Possessed by madness. Every hero must immediately roll a d6 and add their honor. Whoever has the lowest result must immediately engage in a single fight run with the hero that has the highest result. Each of these heroes gains one investigation for every hit they do to the other. And yeah, we can basically choose to roll fewer fight dice, but not fewer than their basic combat skill. Oh man, that's bad. That's really bad. So let's yeah, let's roll some dice. And can you believe it? Once again, it's brother Marcus and he has to fight Katarina the outlaw. That's not a surprise. She has a honor of five. So she rolled a six. He rolled a one. Frederick rolled a four. That's a seven. So yeah, we see brother Marcus. In this case, he will definitely not roll his spirit. So he will roll his combat dice and Katarina the outlaw will roll also only two dice. So in theory, they could now both go down. And again, we are in the mystery phase. This would really hurt us badly. So those are the two dice for Katarina the outlaw. This is the one die for brother Marcus. And here I'm not 100% sure if I have to use the deadly ability. Normally it says may and may do this, may not use, but here it says when rolling five dice hits on four, five or six, I think She's just an instinct. I think she will just use this deadly ability. I think there is nothing. And this was okay, I guess. Yeah, it was. So he doesn't do a damage. That's great. She only does one point of damage. So this is not enough to KO him. But of course, right now, they're both really, really badly hurt. But I think overall, that's okay. And this also means that Katarina just got an additional investigation. And of course, I forgot strength of spirit because you can also use this to cancel a roll of this mystery face chart, for example. But I think maybe it's not that bad because we are still drawing a mystery card and normally they are definitely much worse than those rolls here. And I think, yeah, that's the next thing we have to do. And I think, yeah, this was a good idea to forget his special ability. The agents of evil again, roll runs on the villain's minion chart and place that minion on the board at a random location. And we would move the shadow track one step closer to darkness. No, I think brother Marcus will spend two investigation to try to cancel this card here on a roll of four plus. <laughs> That's close. That's close. Okay. Yeah. Unfortunately, this was not successful. So yeah, let's roll on the chart here. 
That's a six. The horseman rides tonight, and I think this is bad. The villain attack. The hero must immediately resolve a single fight round with the villain. And if there are no heroes in the space, instead place to investigation there. So let's draw a lair card. And that's the marsh. And right now I think there is no one in the marsh here. So we have to place two investigation. And we would then increase the shadow track one step close to darkness. And because of the agents of evil, we have to do that twice. So we are approaching our first threshold here. He gains, or the villain then gets two more wounds, but in the, or leg cards are getting much cheaper. And we would then be also allowed to remove that roadblock up there. Okay, let's move the token here. Let's roll for the movement for brother Marcus. That's a four and poof, to be honest, I think I really should heal. Or should I? Because right now he doesn't really have much to lose. Of course, some investigation, which is always powerful. But in order to heal him, he would also lose investigation. <laughs> so I'm not really sure if I should do that. On the other hand, I really could move him to the manor and hope for something spirit related. So that you might find a book there. Yeah, I think let's do that. One, two, three and four. And ooh, he was poisoned. He really shouldn't have drank the wine, I guess. Your drink has been poisoned by one of the servants who has since vanished. Make an honor five plus test and gain two investigation for every five plus roll. If fail, take T6 root. Okay, yeah, I think that's more or less it. So let's roll for his honor. He has a run of three. Okay, that's not too bad, actually. So there is a chance he could survive that. Wow. Wow, that's great. Those are four investigation and he doesn't have to take any wounds. Cool. Wow, that's really great. Hmm, that's definitely not a bad card for him this round. And yeah, and then it's Katerina the outlaw who is in the same boat as brother Marcus. Badly wounded but really not much to lose other than investigation which she would have to spend anyway in order to yeah, heal. So yeah, let's roll for a move and let's see what she gets. That's only a three. So maybe, maybe, maybe I should also send her to the manor. Yeah, why not? One, two, three. Let's draw our next manor card. And I think that's a good one. Meeting of the elders, gathering in Lord Hanbrook's study. The elders of the town have invited you to join the discussion of recent events and the dark evil that has descended upon the town. Perhaps you are finally gaining the trust. Make a spirit and honor five plus test and gain one investigation for every five plus rolled. Wow, spirit. Wow, he's rolling eight dice now. So I have to actually use one yellow die as well. Each five and six counts. Uh, okay, that's kind of disappointing, but I will take it anyway. That's two successes, so two investigation, which isn't actually a bad thing. And last but not least, it's Frederic Leon. Let's roll for his movement. That's a five. And I think before we now actually move, he wants to play gossip and rumors play at any time to immediately peek at the secret of one town and without revealing them. And I think in this case, I want to peek at the secret of Sophie, the midwife. And that's a real bad secret for her, the coward. The town elder has gone through life with a boastful roar and an arrogant bravado. In reality, when confronted with the most trivial of threats, they are reduced to a whimpering, quivering lump, just as likely to soil themselves as they are to run screaming into the night. While part of the hunting party, roll a d6 at the start of each showdown fight run on the roll of 1, 2 and 3, so 50% chance the town elder runs away and is placed back in town. And I think now it's really time to replace that secret with another secret. Of course, I'm not allowed to peek at that secret, but I think I can still decide to check it out. At a later point of the game. And I think now it's time to actually get some investigation for Frederick Leon. I think he should be able to make it there, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think let's move in there. One, two, three, 
four. Then we try to gain this investigation here. So I would roll my cunning and every five plus gives me one of those. Oh, are you kidding me? Really close. So he was able only to gain one investigation. And now I have to encounter the space, the marsh roll of d6 on a three plus. We could then draw an event. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay, at least that's something. And here we found Search for the Truth. That's another great card for Frederick. Play to look at the town elder's secrets without revealing them. You may discard any number of those secrets by paying one investigation each afterwards. If the town elder has no secrets remaining, draw one new secret item without looking. I will totally play this card right away again to check out the new secret of Sophie the Midwife. And wow, now she became a tank. Reluctant hero, closely guarded and quiet. The elder clearly keeps a reserved manner. Only desperate times can stir this reluctant hero into action. This town elder may not join a hunting party unless the shadow track is in the red. Okay, uh, that, that's not bad to be honest. But during a showdown, the hero gains three fight dice as well as the town elder's special ability. Wow, that's great. We Definitely keep this secret for Sophie. But of course, we must not forget that she can only join the showdown when we reach those two last sections of the court. But I think overall, that's more or less the most real realistic point in time to really engage the villain. Cool stuff. Let's move into the mystery phase. Let's roll on this table. Oh man, another 11. Are you kidding me? And I think now I really want to consider yeah, let's do that. So he will spend another two investigation to use his strength of spirit in order to try to avoid this possessed by madness event. So on a roll of a four plus, he can cancel it. Yeah, that's good enough. So he canceled this event. Perfect. Unfortunately, cannot use his special ability during this mystery phase again. So yeah, let's see what card we get. And that's a chill wind. While this card is in play, all heroes are minus one fight dice. Minimal for one, limit one weather card in play. At any time, discard any weather card already in play. And this is now the time to talk about Brother Marcus's special ability again, because during the next round, he can basically try to get rid of that card four times. Three times for the hero phases and once during the mystery phase and each time he can roll a four plus in order to get rid of of course it costs him always two investigation but again he's really great in getting investigation by taking out scopes and whatnot so overall well this really seems a little bit overpowered but for now we have to keep the chill wind and will place it on top of my dice tower so I'm not forgetting this card. But I really will try to get rid of this as soon as possible. Okay, let's move this first player marker and I think I will do another round. Why not? Why not? So let's roll for her movement. That's a five. And before she does anything, Brother Marcus will use his strength of spirit for the first time in order to get rid of this chill wind. And yeah, you see that that's pretty lame. That's a four plus. Yeah, that's good enough. So with his first roll, he was able to get rid of that card right away. And I think you are with me. And I may really reconsider if I will just house rule his special ability as of my next video. I really don't like this. And I think then she will move to the blacksmith. One, two, three, four. There she would be allowed to draw an event. <laughs> wow, are you kidding me? Strength of spirit. Play immediately. Play this card on any hero that here immediately gains a plus one spirit marker. And yeah, of course, I will play this card on Brother Marcus. And I'm not really sure if I should keep this card or not. For now, I will do that. So yeah, he's now a plus one spirit. Spirit. Yeah, I think this card should should be removed anyway because it's just an event, so it's not an item that he could lose or whatnot. Yeah, it's not a remains in play, so yeah, I think let's just get rid of it. At the blacksmith, he or she's now allowed to buy town items here, and there are folks who are using the Arkham Horror rule, whatever, draw three cards from the town item deck and buy one of those cards. This car or this game is already pretty unpredictable in respect to how many die you, dice you are rolling. So I will not play it this way. And I really had a plan to move her there. So in this case, she will go for the pistol, which means she will now 
pay five investigation now has combat plus one. And now it does matter if she would be KO'd because if she will be KO'd and rolls higher than a two, for example, then she would also have to get rid of her item, for example. And then this is really, or would really hurt her. But as we still have this, if I could just reach card, we can basically take it back right away. So overall, this doesn't really hurt her at all. Then it's Frederick. Let's roll for his movement. That's a four. And I think I want to move him to the old woods. There are, or there's still militia there who could help them. I think that's overall not a bad idea. So one, two. Let's draw the old wood card. <laughs> the runic amulet. You may now use spirit instead of combat during a fight. Roll fight dice equal to your spirit. Spirit. That's not really great for Frederick as he has two combat and two spirit, but he may consider training spirit and then it may make a difference. So overall, and I think fighting against those ghost soldiers, this may be definitely not a bad idea. And because of the magistrate's mandate, the card he holds, he would be allowed to carry one additional card from either the old woods or the abandoned keep. So, but I'm not sure if he will wants to linger there and draw for another card. Now let's see. Last but not least, it's brother Marcus. So let's roll. That's a two. Okay, with a two, I think there's really not much he can do. So I think I want him to stay at the manor. So he's lingering. This means he would roll another die and on a roll of one, he will get attacked by the spectral horseman. No, that's a four, not a problem. So let's draw another card for him, the manor. And here we found the Book of Riddles, plus one cunning. Once per fight round, you may pay three investigation to add your cunning to your combat for a single attack. That's not bad, but I think for him, not really important. And then we are in the laugh and chuckles face, like my good friend Paul used to call it. So yeah, let's roll on this chart here. That's the nine. And here we have the unnatural storm. A powerful supernatural storm has blown over the town. Immediately discard any mystery card in play that is keyword weather. Okay, we got rid of it anyway. Also roll once on the villain's minion chart. We're rolling any non-event result to see what the elder, what the evil storm has brought. If the villain attacks during the storm, it does so at a random location and is plus three combat. And the only event we have on the villain chart here or the minion chart here is the horseman rides tonight. The villain attacks, the hero must immediately resolve a single fight round. So again, we will see a random location. So let's draw a new lair card. And he strikes at the town hall. And I think that's really not a problem because there is no one there. Then he would do his relentless charge towards the town hall. So he basically round, rides around in circles here at the town hall, but there is no one there who he should attack. But I think he's not spawning. Yeah, yeah, still. The, if there are no heroes in the space, instead place two investigation at the location and the shadow drag moves one clo step closer to darkness. Yep, yeah, that's I think something we still have to do. So let's place those two investigation here and move the shadow track one step closer to darkness, which now means the spectral horseman gains plus two wounds and we can get rid of this roadblock here. And now I'm thinking if I have forgotten his relentless charge ability when we drew the Agents of Evil the last round or the round before that. And I believe at that point in time, Katarina was there, but I cannot remember to be honest. So I think um, I have to check the footage again. I think this is something that I will then correct at the start of the next round. So it could might as well be that Katarina would have been KO during the last mystery phase or so. And this would have, this would be bad, to be honest. This would be really bad because there is so much I should take back, which I cannot take back. So poof. yeah, let's see. I, I really have to check the footage. And of course, we still have to draw our mystery card, the Tide of Darkness, a wave of the villain's minions attack. Roll once on the villain's minion chart, re-rolling any event result and place that minion as well as three investigation at three random locations. So let's do that. Okay, 
That's a four. I have to re-roll that because that's an event. That's a six. Let's re-roll that. And that's a three again. Three ghost soldiers will be spawned accordingly. So the first goes to the covered bridge. The second one goes to the church. And the third one goes to the abandoned keep. Okay, I think that's not too bad for brother Marcus, to be honest. He could really try to take those guys out and really get a lot of cards. And I think I will not cancel this Mr. Card. No, I've rolled anyway, so I think that's too late. But I think overall that's not too bad because with that he can really gain a hell of a lot of investigation. Last but not least, we will move the first player marker to Frederick Leon. And I think then I will call it a day for now. So I really hope you are still enjoying my little playthrough. I really hope I haven't messed things up, especially this one role here on the horseman rides with those agents of evil. This would be would be really bad and then I really have to think of a way how to punish myself to be honest but yeah let's wait and see and really hope to see you soon in one of my other videos and yeah until then bye bye <laughs>